welcome to another episode of Spanish Answers, episode 16 to be exact. And because we just got through a really in-depth five-part series on El Boseo, I thought today we could do something that was a little lighter, a little bit more fun, and less brain work, so to speak. So today we're going to do our first ever cultural highlight. Well, I guess technically some of the specials have been cultural highlights, but now we've got an official name for it. So anyways, cultural highlight number one. El Chavo del Ocho. So if you've never heard of it, sit back and enjoy the ride. So what is El Chavo del Ocho? Well, the real question is actually, who is El Chavo del Ocho? So it is a show, but it's also the main character of this show, which takes place in La Vecindad, which is kind of like the area of houses. It's a type, a style of housing where you have buildings that kind of create a courtyard inside them and in this episode there are basically apartments that everyone lives in and it's a poor neighborhood it's not really specifically based anywhere but it takes place here and most of the show takes place in the patio of the vecindad um, there's a few that are in the schoolyard or sometimes in someone's house or business but most of the time it's in the patio of la vecindad and basically the show is just skits of children having adventures or mainly mishaps. And the funny thing about the show is all of the characters are adults playing children. So you have El Chavo de Rocho, which was played by a guy till he was, I think, in his 60s. So it makes it comical because they all wear these large, oversized, childish clothing so that they appear to be children. You know, they'll put like freckles or something on their face, wear their hair a certain style. And it works, like you can tell they're adults pretending to be children, but at the same time you can kind of see what the sketch is trying to show. So it started out originally as a sketch on a TV show and it was so popular that they turned it into its own show. And when I say popular, uh, when I was reading the Huff Post, it said, it, I quote, averaged more viewers than the 2014 Super Bowl, unquote. Which, I mean, that had, according to, I think, CBS, it had 111.5 million viewers. So in 2012, for example, El Chavo averaged daily about 91 million viewers, and that's just in the Americas. Obviously, it's not including countries like Spain. So it's a very popular show. And the reason why it's so important that you understand what the show is, is it's a cultural icon for pretty much all of Latin America. Even though the show is Mexican-based, it is known throughout the Spanish-speaking world, and it is awesome. I love this show. I am so glad I found it, and I hope that you do go and research the show, try and watch some of the shows on episode or on YouTube. Uh, I'll give you some links if I can at the end of this, and Netflix, I just discovered, to my delight, has many episodes of El Chavo del Ocho playing right now. And the reason why I say to my delight, because while I can watch the ones on YouTube, it is unfortunately really really hard to find ones that have English subtitles which means it's really really hard for me to watch them with my husband and enjoy them because he doesn't speak Spanish. The few that we have watched together that did have subtitles he really enjoyed them. So Netflix does have English subtitles for their episodes which I am stoked about because now Sean and I can watch it together and enjoy so many more episodes. But yes if you've ever seen El Chavo del Ocho, if you've ever seen some of the pictures in like a restaurant or maybe you've seen other characters made by his creator, like El Chapulín Colorado. And he looks like this big guy dressed in like a bug costume with a, it's a red outfit and it's got a heart and a CH on it. So I've also seen this in a Mexican restaurant before. If you are able to understand more about the culture of the language you're studying, then when you go to restaurants or you go to countries, and you see these iconic figures, you know, put on posters, put in videos. I know that they make a lot of references in Mexican shows to El Chavo del Ocho or any of the other ones. It really helps you to understand it and you also feel like you're a part of that culture. So it's a really fun feeling and I really want you to feel that too. So continuing, let's talk about some of the characters. I would show you clips or photos of these characters on the YouTube video, but I'm not entirely sure what the copyright law would be here, so I'm not going to. I'm just going to let you go look for it yourself. I will have some links, like I said, that I can at the end of the show. But El Chavo is played by Roberto Gomez Bolaños. He is basically the creator of the show as well. He is awesome. I'll talk a little bit more about him on the next slide, but El Chavo is his character, and El Chavo is an orphan boy, the main character of the show, who hides out in an old rain barrel. He is hilarious. 
He often gets into trouble by saying things he shouldn't, or by accidentally throwing things at other people, or accidentally hitting them, like he's just the mishap king. And whenever an adult, for example, tells a group of children to be quiet, he always misses that important cue, and while everyone else has been quiet, he says an insulting thing, normally about the adult there, and then gets into trouble. So some of the famous things he says is, Fui sin querer queriendo. It was without wanting to do it. He says this a lot. Or, Es que no me tienen paciencia. They don't have any patience with me. Normally said after an adult has gotten mad at him and punished him. And then, one of his most iconic phrases, Eso, eso, eso. That, that, that. My husband and I love to do this gesture to each other. That, that, that. And it's, it, he does it with an iconic hand movement. I'll, I'll try and show it to you at the end. But, yes, it's a very memorable show. Lots of memorable phrases. There's another boy on the show called Kiko. And he's kind of El Chavo's friend. El Chavo kind of has friends, kind of doesn't. It's more like when children know that they are stuck playing together and so they form relationships. It's really that. But he likes sports. He generally has a lot of gum in his mouth. His mother um, isn't really well-to-do, but I guess out of all the characters, she seems to be the most well-off um, besides the landlord. And he's basically a spoiled brat. But... Uh, whenever his mom, Doña Florinda, gets mad at Don Ramon, another character we'll talk about, she'll beat Don Ramon up, normally over some mistaken belief that Don Ramon has been unjustly cruel to her little treasure, her little tesoro, uh, Kiko, and then she'll tell Kiko to come inside and leave the riffraff. So he'll say, si mami, choose ma, choose ma, and he's generally hitting Don Ramon as he leaves. So, choose ma means riffraff. It's a great word. Great word to know. Anyways, another character, La Chilindrina. I believe she is named after a pastry called La Chilandrina. So, Chilindrina is the character. Chilandrina is a sweet bread roll with kind of a crust of hardened brown sugar. It means trifle. Um, but it, the brown sugar on it makes it look like it has freckles, and so that's why she's named after it. She's kind of ornery. She's Don Ramon's daughter, and she's, again, kind of El Chavo's friend, kind of not. She likes to say, Fiate, 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 which means, I'm telling you. And she says it like four times. So, this is whenever she's trying to deceive someone or tell them a juicy story. Don Ramon, her father, is a tall, skinny guy who's really good at not paying his rent. So he's constantly getting accidentally kicked or hit by the children, mainly Chavo, and many times Doña Florinda gets upset with him for mistreating her son for no reason, aka she always thinks that he's just punishing her son for no reason whatsoever. Side note, it's normally because he's done something he shouldn't have to Don Ramon. But, because of this, Doña Florinda normally beats him up. So, generally after she's beaten him up, Chavo will say something that he shouldn't, and so Don Ramon will say, Toma! And that's when he hits him on the head. Which, of course, makes Chavo cry and he goes and hides in his barrel. Kind of sounds a little brutal when you talk about it without having seen it, so you really do need to watch it. It is more slapstick humor, and because it is adults playing children, it's not as horrible as it seems, which I guess is a weird thing to say. I don't know. It's very hard to describe or explain, but definitely need to watch it. Don Ramon will also say, Y no te doy otra no más porque. I'm not going to give you another one only because... Mm, fill in the blank. Doña Florinda is Kiko's mom. She always has rollers in her hair. Like, always. It doesn't really make sense. She hates Don Ramon because she loves her child and spoils him and never believes he can do anything wrong, almost. She is in love with Professor Hirafales, who is also in turn besotted with her. Nothing seems to ever have come from that. They don't really confess to each other, it seems, ever, but there's definitely that, oh, we're in love and the world doesn't exist for us because we're so in love and it's, it's kind of cheesy. But one thing that she says a lot is, Vámonos, tesoro, no te juntes con esa chusma. Let's go, my treasure. Don't hang around with that riffraff. She normally says this when she's leaving, after having taught Don Ramon a lesson. Always telling her child, let's go, don't hang out with that riffraff. Then there is La Bruja del 71, or as her actual character name is, Doña Clotilde. So she's an older woman who lives in apartment 71. The children think she is a witch, so they call her the Bruja. She's not really a witch. She is, however, in love with Don Ramon and is constantly trying to chase after him with little success. Poor lady. Then there's Professor Hirafales, and he is 
as I said, in love with Doña Florinda, and he is constantly bringing her flowers, and the two of them are constantly having cups of coffee to chat, talk, basically gaze at each other's eyes. It's weird. But he is also the school teacher, so there are definitely a lot of scenes where he's telling the kids to be quiet as they're all talking and he's trying to teach them a lesson, and Chavo normally says something insulting when everyone quiets down. Senor Barriga, which also can be Mr. Belly, I guess it's an actual last name, but Barriga in Spanish also means belly, so it's kind of like this cool play on words. The dude is big. He's big. But he's always coming, trying to collect his rent from the inhabitants of La Vecindad, and with Don Ramon at least, it doesn't really work. The guy that plays him, Edgar Vivar, also plays a character called Ñoño, which is my favorite name ever. Ñoño is also a big boy, taking after his father, who is Señor Barriga, and he's a bit naive. Uh, definitely spoiled. But one of the things he says a lot is, Mirelo, eh? Mirelo, eh? Mirelo, eh? Getting more and more upset. Which basically means, do you see that, huh? And he says this whenever Chavo says something mean to him, or does a prank, or the other children did. It's a fun phrase to, to watch the actor say. But, yeah. So those are basically the characters. So because it's so important that you know who plays them, El Chavo is Roberto Gomez Bolaños, who's also the creator of the show. Kiko is played by Carlos Villagran. La Chilindrina is Maria Antonieta de las Nieves. I love her last name. Side note. Don Ramon is Ramon Valdez. Doña Florinda is Florinda Meza. I love how they kept the actors' names in the actual character names. That's funny. Anyways, Doña Clotilde is Angelinas Fernandez. Professor Hirafales is Ruben Aguirre. And Senor Barriga, or Ñoño, is Edgar Vilar. One other side note about the characters, all of the children have unique, specific cries that they perform. I am not going to try and recreate those because one, I will not do it justice, and two, I think La Chilindrina, the actress is a little bit, she's very particular about her cry and her character as a whole, so we're not going to touch it. But I highly recommend that you watch the show just to see the different ways that each child cries because they are funny and definitely unique. Like kudos to either the writers or the director or the actors. Whoever thought up each character's cry, because it's brilliant. Let's talk a little bit more about some basic facts. El Chavo de Ocho made about 1,300 episodes throughout the 24 years that it ran. An incredible number of episodes. And like I said, most of the ones I've been able to find on Amazon or YouTube don't really have subtitles. Yes, I did say Amazon. You can buy episodes of El Chavo de Ocho, which is definitely something on my to-do list. The shows began on June 20th, 1971, and they ran for 24 years, ending in 1992. The rating is PG, so it's really nice because it's family-friendly, but the show is clever enough that even adults get a huge kick out of it. It was made in Mexico, and the creator is Roberto Gomez Bolaños, which you might be familiar with already because it's the same guy who plays El Chavo. Now, this man is also known as Chespirito, which is the Spanishization, kind of, of Shakespeare. So it's kind of like saying mini or little Shakespeare, because, you know, Shakespeare, Chespier, Chespierito. You kind of see that? Yeah. Anyways, he was very talented. He was really, really popular in all of Latin America. Um, I think even in Spain. Don't quote me on that one, though. And basically created a whole bunch of other shows and other characters that he's really well known for as well. So if you want to know more about him, I highly recommend looking him up because he is a fascinating person and his characters are also interesting characters. Like, just a great comedian. Unfortunately, he did die in 2014, which is a bit sad. So only about, what, five years ago? Great, great comedian. Going to be very much missed. Another side note is that they have created an animated series. They started it in 2006. Doesn't have Chilindrina because of copyright issues with the actress, and you can also look more into that if you would like. But um, the animated series, I have not tried out, mainly because I am really attached to the show itself, like the original show, and I don't know how I would feel about the animated series. It just wouldn't be quite the same for me. Doesn't mean you shouldn't watch it. It probably is pretty funny, but I just haven't gotten to it yet. I really should try an episode or two just to see. But anyways, so, El Chavo del Ocho. That's a quick, brief overview of one of the iconic cultural highlights of the Spanish-speaking world. So if you want to check out more of the episodes, check out my show notes. 
that's really all for today. If you have any questions or topics that you'd like me to discuss, please send them to me at contact at languageanswers.com. That's contact at languageanswers.com. And if you don't want to miss another episode ever again, please subscribe either on YouTube or wherever you're getting this podcast. And if you liked this episode, please hit like and leave me a positive comment because those are very helpful as well. Or positive rating or both. I mean, come on, why not? And this episode was produced by Language Answers Limited at www.languageanswers.com. I'm a Spanish to English translator, a podcaster, and an English editor. If you would like a free quote, please visit my website, www.languageanswers.com. All right, well, I hope today's episode has gotten you thoroughly intrigued into El Chavo del Ocho and that you're going to go do all sorts of research that mainly involves watching YouTube videos or Netflix videos. That's kind of what my homework is to do. Anyways, uh, in the links, you'll also notice that La Secu also did an episode that was based on El Chavo del Ocho that I found, and I absolutely loved it. So, Little dirty secret, I love La Secu. It's a Cartoon Network show, I know, for kids, I know, but it makes me laugh. It makes me smile. If it was in English, maybe not, but it's in Spanish, and I love it. So, they did an episode of show, two loves combined. How could it get any better? Anyways, I know I also said that I would try and show you how to do the iconic finger movement that El Chavo does whenever he sees something. He's like, that, that, that's right, that's it. So... If you can see this, it goes, eso, 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 eso. he like puts his fingers together, his, um, your middle and your finger and your thumb finger, and then your index kind of goes up and down. Eso, 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 eso. It's awesome. All right. Well, that's all I have for today. I hope that this was fun and that you have way more fun researching it because I would. Anyways, I will talk to you in two weeks. See you then.